when Gohan was initially called upon to defeat Cell. There was much speculation he would take the reins from his father as the lead protagonist of the series. Though we know now this not to be the case. What if it was neither he or Goku to take the primary focus moving forward? What if someone else, albeit familiar to us today, were given a much more prominent role than they currently play? As the young Super Saiyan 2 falls to his knees in defeat, having let his own hubris get the better of him. Goku steps up to teleport Cell off the planet before he can unleash his Earth-destroying kamikaze attack. With his final words, he glances back at his son to smile he's proud of him. And as we're aware, he takes him to King Kai. While the group floats above Snake Way, Kaiosama would alert his former student his plan failed, and Cell still lives. First cutting down trunks. Vegeta sent into a maddening rage at the sight of his fallen son. Gohan calls for the others to protect themselves from his furious onslaught. Krillin doesn't even understand how this is the same Vegeta as before. His power is far higher than he's felt previously. Piccolo reasons the anger of seeing his own son murdered before his eyes was enough to push him past his limits. He screams for Cell to reveal himself from the debris. He's not finished with him yet. Although surpassing his limits, it's still not near enough for this enemy. In deciding this beating was too little, the villain scowls. As usual, you're so pitiful you can't even honor the memory of your tragically deceased son. Getting one final hit on the bio-android, Cell is shocked the Saiyan was able to leave a mark. Though in the grand scheme of things, it's merely a simple setback. As here the prince lies, already half dead, his little rise of power was only the most subtle of flickers of a dying flame. Bellowing, it's time to die! Naturally, Gohan shields Vegeta from what would be a fatal blast which their foe admits he didn't expect. Now it'll be easier than ever to do away with Gohan. Now that his right arm is pretty much useless. The final beam struggle would soon commence. From Otherworld via King Kai, Goku encourages his son he still has much energy left within him and he must unleash all of his strength. But the boy is at the end of his rope. His body is suffering too much. He apologizes to his dad. Cell is too strong and he can't keep up anymore. Vegeta can sense the same. The power difference between he and Cell is too great. This is the end. Piccolo shouts for Gohan not to give up, but Cell is set on finishing this here and now. With that push, the young Saiyan is no more. Clenching his fist, Goku pleads for the forgiveness of his friends and family. This is all his fault. His victory all but assured. The villain cackles the final hope of Earth has gone up in smoke. The end is near for these remaining vermin. Even though he used a lot of energy against Son Gohan, they still don't stand a chance in his wake. He will annihilate them all. <laughs> Following
doing this single blast? All the Z fighters have perished. Or almost all of them. Cell is amazed to see Krillin of all warriors is still breathing. Quite the feat for such a fragile being. But now it's time for him to join his comrades. As something else catches his attention. 18. Krillin can already tell what he's thinking and pleads with the monster to kill him in her place. Just leave her alone. He mutters that Son Goku is dead, and he himself has reached his perfect form. This android has no further purpose of existing. Screaming for Cell to stop! Satisfied with his most recent kill, he takes a dark pleasure in doing away with obsolete technology. The final Z Fighter sobs for what has been lost today, cursing that Cell has murdered everyone who was willing to sacrifice themselves. So just blow up the Earth already and get it over with! But this confuses the android, asking, blow up the Earth? That's not my goal. Thanks to Goku and his instantaneous movement technique, he has but entire galaxies to destroy. So with that, he'll be leaving the Earth, though not before completely devastating it and its people. As for Krillin, to lower himself to such a level would be an insult to his perfection. He will allow him to continue living his miserable existence in fear and shame. Not losing his resolve completely, Krillin warns he will pay for this. With a wave, he promises they'll meet again soon. King Yemma's office at the Earth check-in station. Goku is seen pleading with Enma about something. Who beckons if the Saiyan can see he's busy? This cell figure just decimated half the population of Earth, and now he's the one stuck with the consequences. The answer is no. Even though he died defending the Earth, the sheer number of bad things he's done prevents him from going to heaven or retaining his body. Though seeming to have some sort of revelation, he does feel the death of his young son changes things a bit. It would be a lot of work to find him a suitable mentor. He resolves to accept Goku's proposition, but at the first offense, he goes straight to hell. Our happy-go-lucky hero gleefully thanks the Ethereal Judge for his decision. As he spouts, See Vegeta? I told you! Though even in the afterlife, the prince laments his rival still has to find ways to humiliate him, and he will pay for this. As it becomes evident, Cell may have had some foresight on his own future had he let poor little Trunks here come to age. However, Dende and Popo remain safe high on the lookout. Whether an oversight or not, the gang still have the Dragon Balls. Just as they're about to summon Shenron, Goku hollers for him to wait. He has to talk to him first. They're all in other world with King Kai, and he thinks it would be wiser to let things flow naturally and accept their defeat against Cell. He would have loved to fight him again, but Kaiosama is right. After all, Trunks came from the future to warn them about the androids. After that came an even bigger threat. It's not an easy call to make, but they're all gonna stay here. While Krillin is wearily in disbelief, Bulma screams at him if he's kidding. They can't leave him like this. Her baby boy and parents all died when Cell blew up West City. Stepping up to speak with her himself, Vegeta assures the boy is safe in Otherworld with him. And the Kai isn't wrong. To revive the Earthlings could alert Cell if he felt that much energy suddenly return. If he came back, there would be no stopping him and she'd lose everyone all over again. Given the Earth's warriors are gone, he doesn't think he'll come back. So she'll be safe. But with himself, the Saiyan race dies. He thanks her for everything she's done, bidding her a final farewell. Though she knows his words are true, it doesn't do anything to ease the pain. Seven years have passed since Cell left the Earth. Mankind still suffers from the devastation he left behind. But life finally resumed to what could be called a new normal. The world was at peace. With Krillin and Roshi, the news talks about how the capital of East City has finally finished reconstruction. It was the last known location to be ravaged by the monster known as Cell. The Kami student curses the android responsible for all this. His teacher quells he calm himself. He knows it's a difficult fate to accept, but they have to move forward. And he knows, he just can't shake the memory that during his rampage of West City, baby trunks, Cell has just caused so much misery. The old timer knows how he feels, only hoping Bulma's doing okay. But the warrior must stop beating himself up over this. Even though Cell spared him, he couldn't have done anything to prevent this disaster. Of course, if only Goku and Gohan were still here. But they refuse to be brought back to life, and they must respect that decision. 
When a ship zeroes in on Kami House. With that knock on the door, a terrible, dark, long forgotten presence is finally felt. Chi Chi, of course, who happily chorts, long time no see, asking if they're still in front of that TV. What a sad sight for two martial arts masters, of who offer a less warm greeting, one that doesn't go unnoticed. This causes her to snarl, they should see the look on their faces. They appear as if they've just seen Cell. But no, it's not that, it's she shouldn't be silly. They're just surprised to see her is all, wondering what brings her here after all these years. Though she knows they won't be surprised to hear she's not here to catch up or ask how they're doing. She's here because she needs their help. Catching their curiosity. Roshi beckons if she has some furniture or something heavy to move, Krillin here would be happy to take care of it. But she tells him not to be stupid, as if she'd be here for such a futile manner. It's a long story, but if they follow her outside, they'll soon understand. Quickly walking out to the ship, she calls for someone to come out. Krillin is now confused what exactly she's planning to show him. But upon entering, there's only an empty bed, but Chi Chi knows he was here just a minute ago. The pair begin to believe these hard times may have begun to take a toll on her mental state. Krillin presses that there's nobody else here besides the three of them. She's had a long journey. Maybe she should rest a bit. When the voice of a child chimes, he thinks she's looking for him. With that uncanny face and hair, they wonder if this could actually be Goku. Chi Chi scolds Goten had her worried and to get back over here now. Who, much like his father, giggles that he just had to pee. Taking him by the hand, he fusses that he isn't a baby anymore and to let him go. As the situation progresses, Roshi now sees it must be Goku's son, though he could have sworn it was Goku himself at first glance. Krillin wonders how this could be. When his master chuckles, he must still have a bit to learn about life. The staggering resemblance to Goku must mean this little one was born only a few months after the Cell Games. Introducing what appears to be a much less coy Goten, his mother urges he introduce himself properly to his dad's friends, who eagerly states, Hi, I'm Goten. I'm six and a half years old and I love fighting and video games. Nice to meet you. The others return his greeting, pointing out how much he looks like his dad. Chi Chi admits that sometimes it feels like she's looking at Goku in his youth. The hermit now sees the reason for her visit, though can't help but ask what caused her to wait all these years, which should be obvious to the both of them. Neither one of them are good role models. They would have shown the same bad influences as they did on Gohan, but she didn't merely bring Goten here for them to finally meet. She wants them to train him. With the vast majority of Z fighters gone for good, arguably the most overlooked character in all of Dragon Ball, maybe Earth's most promising hope. Bewildered by Chi Chi's request, Krillin remembers she wanted Gohan to become a great scientist or something. Why would she want them to train Goten for? Crossing her arms, she knows that the world is at peace. But since Cell left all those years ago, she can't shake this bad feeling she has he'll come back. And on that day, the world will need a hero. Goten isn't like his brother was. He only likes fighting and isn't interested in his studies. Though the boy objects, he does also like video games. And if he's being honest, Krillin has had the same feeling regarding Cell. However, he doubts he himself can shape the kid into a fighter capable of beating him. Even Goku and Gohan couldn't do anything. She retorts not to worry about Goten. She's been training him herself, and he's much stronger than they think. But he's still young. Goku and Gohan went through fights to the death to reach such levels. Chi Chi huffs Gohan was only four when Piccolo trained him, and to just fight Goten himself and he'll see. The mere mention of a fight is enough to make the child's hair stand on end. Roshi urges him to do as she says. It's Goku's son they're talking about. Though the former student doesn't know what to think of this. He reminds Krillin he's been training for the last seven years like never before. Look at this as a test. This gets Goten excited. He beckons. For real? We're gonna fight? Please say yes, Mr. Baldi. But for starters, he can call him Krillin. But he wins. They can do a little bit of training. Mirroring his father's enthusiasm, he jumps into the air ecstatic. Roshi jostles, he thinks he should go easy on him though. If he hurts him, Chi Chi could kill him. But this was his idea. Chi Chi tells her son it's important to stay hydrated before training and to remember what she told him before coming here. This sight takes the old timer back almost 30 years ago. The resemblance with his father is uncanny, almost troubling. Goten inquires if his mother is planning to fight too. 
but she doesn't think so. However, she doesn't want either of them to damage the shit Bulma gave her. So she capsules it up for now. Krillin has to point out that Chi Chi used to hate fighting so much. It's surprising to see how much she's changed. But instead of rambling, he should be focusing on Goten. It wouldn't be wise to underestimate him. Remembering who he's talking to, he apologizes, stating he seems well trained. The young boy gets in a quick stretch with his left leg. Or is it his right? He always gets him mixed up. He questions if Mr. Krillin here is ready. And is sorry to say, he doesn't look really strong. But he just wait and see. The turtle student dares him to land just a single hit. So far, it appears that Krillin's years of experience trumps the raw talent of Goten. He compliments he's keeping up and that's good. But the boy flies into a fury at not being able to land a single finger on his opponent, shouting, what does he mean keeping up? All he's doing is disappearing. So far, he's only fought his mom and the dinosaurs on Mount Paozu. And that was a lot more fun than fighting him. He doesn't even know how to fight. Then it hits Krillin. Goten can't sense the power gap between them, which makes sense that he can't sense Ki if only his mother has trained him. After all, she doesn't possess that ability, but it's pretty easy to learn. Though this only enrages Chi Chi as well. She grunts for the warrior not to underestimate her before bellowing to her son to forget what she said earlier, which comes to his great surprise. She told him he could never, but she affirms it's completely fine this time. Giggling, the young fighter states this changes everything and it's time for round two. Krillin's sheer astonishment, and pretty much our expectation. This version of Goten has also unlocked Super Saiyan at a very early stage in life. His mother cackles to know if they're surprised. She told them he was strong. They seem to forget she also knows a thing or two about martial arts. But Roshi just can't let this go. This shouldn't be possible. Sticking up her nose, Chi Chi reveals, to be fair, she simply took away his video games and this was the result. A bit confused by the chatter, Goten asks what that super thing is they're talking about. But getting ignored, he decides since no one wants to answer, they can just get back to the fight. Pleading for him to wait, Goten doesn't heed the request and Krillin is slugged in the face. The little brat bellows out in laughter at the thought of a one-hit knockout. He never even saw him coming. While her son cheers in the background, Chi Chi notices Krillin isn't moving. Could he be? Finally standing, Roshi panically asks if he's okay. But he tells him not to worry. He then scolds Goten that it's not really fair to plan to attack an opponent by surprise, especially when he's a Super Saiyan. Fortunately, he was able to accommodate and raise his power in time. In one ear and out the other, Goten only takes curiosity and Super Saiyan is what this form is called. His mom just calls it being a little runt or delinquent. Anyway, if he's still standing, that means he's not as bad as he thought. Meanwhile, the old timer finds it weird Krillin took that punch head on, but doesn't really seem to be hurting. Who smirks to admit his opponent is the youngest Super Saiyan he's ever seen, but he's also the weakest. And it's time for round three. Unleashing a times 10 Kaioken. It wasn't known to the others until now he even knew such a technique. The power he's letting out is incredible. His former master wonders what kind of training he underwent to reach such a level. He explains that during his trip to Otherworld, which is a child-friendly way of saying after Frieza killed him, King Kai taught him the basics of the technique. When he got wished back to life, he mostly disregarded using it in any practical way because he thought he was too weak. Regardless of the circumstances, he questions if Goten is ready to continue with their training. And as some kids will do, he brushes this off as nothing. He's red now, so what? All it means is this time he'll have no excuse. Life experience once again proving superior. The turtle student realizes Goten is already tired. 
he hasn't mastered his Super Saiyan transformation at all yet. With this, he tells him to return to his base form. That's enough for today. But he screams, it's not over! Powering up, the boy's key rises dramatically. He vows to show his adversary he's not tired. It's only too bad he hasn't had time to name this attack yet. But a blast of this level would be far too dangerous around here. Deflecting it into the ocean, Krillin utters it's only lucky he took some of the force on himself. Otherwise, the entire island would have been submerged. To have this kind of power at such a young age is crazy. As the others are left in a stunned silence, the child is completely gassed out. Realizing he missed, he collapses, promising next time he'll win. Swooping in, the mother hawk frantically tries to bring her son back to consciousness. Krill impresses she not worry. He's only exhausted himself from using so much energy. Though she can't help but devolve into a sobbing mess crying this is all her fault and she's so sorry that she did this to her baby. Again, Krillin assures he will be okay and open his eyes soon. He guesses she actually hasn't changed that much after all. Roshi excitedly shouts the turtle school has a new pupil. He wonders if Goku knows about Goten. Is this his final gift to humanity? A new hope. Once Goten had recovered, Chi Chi and Krillin agreed upon getting training two weeks per month. The time for the first goodbyes had come. The boy's mother tells him not to cry. She will be back for him soon, and not to forget to call her every day. Taking off and finally letting the tears flow herself. A new adventure has begun. But very soon, the young Saiyan will discover he may be in for more than he bargained for. As he finds out, they don't have any video games. Over the next year, Goten would undergo the same training as Krillin and his father. By the time he was about eight years old, all it took was a single day to get him flying. His mentor is really amazed by this. Even after two years, this kid never ceases to amaze him. It was a good idea to force him to train at minimum power to make him harden his body and mind. Now that he's perfectly mastered his key, they can take their training to the next level. Enthusiastically learning the Kamehameha. He unfortunately damages Kame House. And not to be the only one doing some learning, he brings his video games to teach Krillin how to play. Though doing a fourth turn to the left comboed with a punch to perform a Hadouken doesn't make a lot of sense to the martial arts master. With their training going even better than expected, what surprises are still in store for our heroes? And what threats still lie ahead? Will Cell sense the new rising power on Earth? Or even worse, will Bobbity make his way to our little blue world? Year 777, or about 10 years after the Cell games, Goten and Krillin land in the middle of what appears to be a wasteland. The former questions if they're there yet, which they are. This is where they're going to train. Asking the obvious, Goten is curious why they traveled all the way out here to do that. Couldn't they have just stayed on Grandpa Roshi's island instead? But not for this training. Today will be special. He's allowing the child to transform into a Super Saiyan, resulting in a more than excited reaction. It's been forever since he's been allowed to use it. His mentor believes a student is strong enough now to manage it properly. Though, after all these years, he wonders if he still knows how to transform. If he can't, it'll be Krillin's fault. His teacher laughs this off doubting he could ever forget how to do it. He already told him it was important for him to learn the basics of martial arts before wielding the power of Super Saiyan. He ushers him to step back a little and transform. Doing so, he screams out. But nothing happens. Only a bit of dust kicks into the air. He worriedly inquires what's wrong. Why isn't he changing? Sporting a devilish grin. He throws his hands to his head shouting, No, no, no! I can't! He was right. It's all Krillin's fault because he wouldn't let him use it over the last three years. And look what happened. What will they do now? Panicked, he never thought he could actually forget how to transform. Though the boy just laughs that he fell for it. And enough playing around. He hollers for his teacher not to look at him like that. He's kidding. How could he forget something so easy? <laughs> if 
feeling is key. Krillin hasn't even taught him how to boost his strength in short bursts yet, but his power is already so high. Unbelievable. This information isn't lost on the student. He wonders himself how he got so freakishly strong. He guesses all that useless training finally paid off after all. Since they have said training, supposes he'll take that as a compliment. With this, the child's cocky nature also returns. He cackles it looks like he's much, much stronger than him now. Talk about surpassing the master. Rubbing his nose, he asks if he's speechless. He smiles, his student is as arrogant as ever. The power of Super Saiyan is still going to his head. So it's time for today's lesson. Unveiling Kaioken times 20. The young prodigy wasn't counting on this. Krillin states this is peak Kaioken. It's kind of funny. His soon-to-be opponent appears much less confident all of a sudden, mockingly asking if something's wrong. The taunt aggravates him. With this darn times 20 multiplier, he's undoubtedly stronger here. But it doesn't matter. He calls out that he kept this new power to himself, and now he thinks he's the best because he's letting out a little more energy. Krillin is the one who taught him power alone isn't enough to win. And today, he will only prove that. Which is exactly what his master wanted to hear, though not to expect him to go easy on him. Goten exhales, he really isn't going easy on him. He didn't think he could match his own speed. Who tells his student he's become an incredible warrior? If he wasn't going all out, Krillin wouldn't have stood a chance against him while he's using Super Saiyan. However, boosting one's speed by drawing from their power only makes his hits a lot weaker. But the child only rolls his eyes at what Mr. Know-It-All has to say, causing Krillin to wonder if he actually ever listens to his advice. But Goten screams he doesn't need his advice and already knows how to win this fight. He better get ready because he won't be able to escape his ultimate combo. In a split second, Krillin realizes his student is about to use the Solar Flare, which is more embarrassing to our bald hero than probably anyone else. Now that a certain technique of Goten's has a name. Hit head on by the boy's killer blast. The warrior coughs, he's lost. Goten bellows out with laughter, to a nine and a half year old no less. He told him he was going to win this time. Now it's game over. But his master is merely kidding. Returning to his maximum Kaioken state, Goten can't believe he still has enough left in him to power back up like this. Settling. Krillin goes to make sure his pupil is okay. Who appears fine, though the same can't be said about his pride. 
but his master urges he look at him, referring to how battle-worn they are. The boy cuts him off. He admits Krillin is super strong, but swears this will be the last time that he loses. His teacher offers a few words of encouragement. He reminds it's his birthday in two weeks. He hasn't forgotten that he promised to buy him a new video game, right? He laughs at his dual track mind. The kid does know what he wants. As promised, he will get him his game. Also, they're going somewhere really special. For now, it's time to go home. Reaching out, he asks again if he's okay and is at least enough so to fly on his own. The pair soon stop by a cliff overlooking the city. The child exudes he's never been so tired from flying before, which is normal. His body went through a lot today. After all, it is the first time he's fought at such intensity, hence the reason for resting here a bit. He then prompts him to look at the city below. It's called Blue City. Krillin himself was born in a nearby town. Ten years ago, it was destroyed by Cell. He and the survivors worked hard to rebuild it. Speaking of which, his pupil has a question. If Cell was here, does he think they'd have a chance of beating him? But no, not in the slightest. They wouldn't even last a minute. This surprises Goten, figuring it wouldn't be that lopsided. Is Cell really strong or are they just that bad? This makes Krillin laugh. They're not that bad. Actually, with Goten's power, he thinks he could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Frieza. But Cell is a real monster. They never face such a powerful foe. But the child states he's not afraid. Krillin will see. He will surpass him and be the one to defeat him. Another year passes. Goten questions what special place they're going to this time. His senior reveals it to be Kami's lookout. And by Kami, meaning God. The sheer utterance of this location has his attention. Krillin explains it's a sacred sanctuary where the god of Earth overlooks the planet. His name is Dende. He's a Namekian just like Piccolo. But a god. He must be pretty strong, but asks why his mentor never mentioned him before. But he kind of did. He already told him about Kami, who was one with Piccolo. Dende is the one who took over in his place. He's no warrior, but he possesses great magical abilities, which does ring a bell with Goten. Krillin wants to ask for permission to use the Room of Spirit and Time for a bit. It's a place of total emptiness where a single day on Earth lasts an entire year in there. It's the perfect location to train. His pupil can't believe such a place even exists. It's there where Goku and Gohan trained for the Cell games. He himself used it for six months to master the Kaioken. It's really tough to get accustomed to the atmosphere there, as he'll see. But Goten only rolls his eyes yet again. If Krillin did it, it'll be a piece of cake for him. Arriving at Corrin's tower, he explains how they need to fly to the very top of it. Passing the first temple, Goten wonders if they've arrived. But it's told to him that's where Master Corrin lives. A long time ago, Master Roshi was trained by him. After that, Goku was too. Shouting out to the aforementioned and Yajirobe, the pair are shocked to see the sight before him. While the boy wonders if Corrin is the cat or the fatty, Corrin can help but bulk at the kid with Krillin. He could swear it was Goku. Soon after, they would arrive at the lookout. Greeting Dende and Popo. The Namek inquires how he's been. It's been a long time. He explains how he thought he might want to meet Goku's son. But cutting him off, Dende blurts out, You're Goten, right? Which is strange, as he shouldn't know his name yet. But Popo reminds they are talking to the God of Earth, who tells how he's been watching over Goten since he was a baby. He had also seen the two of them training some time ago, calling them both incredible warriors. Krillin forgot he could see such things from the lookout, figuring there goes the surprise. But yeah, they've been training hard for years now. Naturally, he also knows they've come to use the Room of Spirit and Time. It's all theirs. Quick and easy, they thank the Guardian. With that out of the way, Popo goes to lead him to the room. Since the God of Earth knew they were coming, he already prepared everything for their stay inside. Which brings Dende to question how long they do plan on staying in there. There should be enough provisions for up to two years. Krillin assures that'll be more than plenty. They should only be in there a year this time. Without any senzu, staying in any longer could get a bit dangerous. When something catches everyone's attention. Boma! She jokes Krillin looks as if he's seen a ghost, but he just didn't expect to see her here. It's been like 10 years. And she knows it probably does feel a bit sudden after so long. She just felt it was time to come see him. As the image of young Goten catches her eye, 
For what reason has Bulma traveled to Kami's lookout? And how much progress will be made by the two warriors upon entering the room of spirit and time?